Amen. I'm excited to be back from the fog and the rain, and it was lovely and very restful. And this is what we needed. I certainly didn't know it was supposed to be that restful, um, but it was we were very good. And so it is just such a blessing to be back with you all. When we hear the words of Jesus, the yoke is easy. And the burden is light. Familiar words if you've been around the church or been around any kind of places that talk about scripture, it's just one of those that seems what does it mean to us today? What does it mean to us this morning? We start off hearing, you know, how on earth are the kids ever going to get it? Isn't it funny how some things never change? I write to them when they grandparents concerned that grandchildren aren't getting what they need because they want their children are faith, and they don't necessarily know how that's happening. We hear Jesus talking to God, saying, this is what's happening. Are you really present? Are you hearing what's going on? Do you know why you're listening to me? That's what I think the question is about the words that we're hearing this Why are the crowds listening to Jesus? And they might not know why. He says, first of all, John the Baptist came. He didn't really like him. He was like, fire and brimstone, repent or you're in trouble. It's like, they didn't like that message of hard, hard living. John came and he gathered many people, baptized, prepared the way. John was much more a character outside the box. He was much more of a wearing a camel hair and eating locusts and turn to God or you're going to hell type of thing, which I'm not saying that that's your belief on him, but I just, John was much more, had a much tougher way of being. When Jesus came, it's almost like Jesus is like, let's lighten up. Because God, God wants there are feasts and dancing. There is healing. Doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. There, Jesus is wanting to hear your story. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks you come from or what your past is. Jesus wants there to be a banquet. As long as everyone's included, which tends to cause problems. The part about everyone being included. It's that idea where if you felt like John the Baptist and that whole Old Testament theology stuff so a little hard and a little abrasive, that you really don't want everybody in the club. You want the people you like in the club. Kind of, I love God the way I love God, but you can do everything. See, the thing about God is God loves everybody, which makes it very difficult. Because you can sit there and say, I'm very religious, I love everybody. I might not like everything that's good on I might not like everybody, but I love everybody. I will give you 10 bucks that there are times this week when you will not do that. You don't need to tell your priest. You don't even need to tell anybody. But there are times when loving everyone is hard. I'm sure I've preached before, but I had a mentor earlier years ago that used to say, you know, it's easy to love the love of others. God loves everyone. God wants us all at the table. But we have to know why we're at the table. We hear we're playing all these happy songs and no one's dancing. 
where they sang sad songs and no one's crying. It's like no one's really there. It's like preaching or teaching or talking to like myself and my bird, like, hello. Nobody is nothing is there. But fear is fear. Here, all your stories come together to be part of whatever it is God has us here this morning for a And Jesus is saying, no matter what, you are welcome. As I came back midweek, as many of you know, we read the loss of Bonnie Peterman. Paul is particularly aware of it this morning as she sat right beside Paul at Everson. We will celebrate her life tomorrow morning at 10 and came back and had the blessing of meeting and spending time with the children. Then I was able to spend time yesterday. Jerry Finley, you'll be glad to know, has been successfully interred in our memorial garden. And thanks to all of you that helped make sure that it continued to be beautiful and right down to um, Bob and George Campbell to make sure that we have a hold of the corporate thing. We came together as a church family to make sure that no matter who we are in the body of Christ, we can find ways to do it. It was wonderful to say that Bonnie's children from all and they were both doing very different things and living in very different worlds and we were talking about how hard it is to find the middle one. We were talking about how hard it is to be kind and how hard it is. Soon, we're turned outside Washington, D.C. and I like say, more God bless him. How is it that we can find ways to find a middle way? We can find a way. We can all agree that we need to eat. And if people should have food, we are not all supposed to agree on the ground. And yet somehow things are broken. And yet they also talk about being brought up in the church and having faith that was one man of their own, no matter where they go or pray, that they knew that the church and their mother's faith was so important. But I will say one of the fun things about this week was yesterday afternoon after the intro, Jerry. I swear to God, Jerry was playing with all of us. Those of you that knew Jerry from me know that he had a twinkle in his eye and probably, well, he has an 11 or 12 year old son that is a character, as you can only imagine. But he had never been in this church. Wow! He didn't think it like all of us, but I said, me. He was like, the whole thing was magic. The whole thing was magic. And I'm like, yeah, your grandfather sat right there, and he wanted to know about what's that big table up there? We went up and we looked at the table. And I let him hold the chalice, and I told him about the board. I bet some of you didn't know this. His father didn't know this. There is a board that goes over the chalice that you guys don't know to see. And I said to his father, do you know why we got this board in here? No. I said, it's so flies, don't get in the line. Oh, he thought that was hysterical. This little boy wanted to talk about God, and so his sister wanted to talk about God. And we sat here and talked about God in the sweltering heat for an hour and a half. When I turned the lights out, I said, Jerry, thank you for coming to the room. They were asking questions. Why do people want to be at the banquet? Why? There is no reason why anyone would come to church for any other reason but if they had some longing to know about God, to know about a higher power. I looked at the little boy who they, they don't go to church and just and uh, he said something about church and he wanted to know about the book of common prayer. I think he figured that she's going to die. And I said, Andrew, can you tell him about the book of common prayer? I'm going to go show the piano to the people. 
we've got a few things going on here. And it took me to a book of public prayer, and I looked at Andrew and said, He doesn't know that. That means you know that. Why are you at the bank? Why do we come to the bank? What is it that gives us our hope and our faith? We know that as Christians, we hear at the end of this reading, my yoke is easy and my burden is small. We know as people of faith, at least I, I believe this for myself, just by being people of faith does not mean life is going to be easy. It doesn't mean everything's going to go smoothly. It doesn't mean we're not going to lose the loved people of faith. What it does mean is that we're never alone. When the happy songs are playing, you're not dancing. Let us be able to give thanks and praise for the blessings that we have. Let us notice those things that are like that are grace filled. We open up again. I mean, I can't tell you. If any of you have been near the ocean the last month? Literally can't see. Over and over again, we kept telling ourselves, but well, how lucky are we? How lucky are we that we just get to be? What are your blessings? Why would you come to the table? How is it that for me, I don't believe there would be any way in my life ever that I would have the opportunity to have a vacation if I was not following that. It wouldn't happen. It is all part of a story that God continues to provide for each of us. What does that mean? Maybe it means a phone call. Maybe someone sends you a text when you least expect it. Maybe you need to send this. Why are you at the table? They are looking at Jesus for something, but Jesus can't just do very Miracles, yes. Grace, yes. But there's some part of us that needs to show up. There's some part of us that needs to come with an open heart and an open mind. I hope I carry the what of curi absolute deep curiosity that that little boy will look at everyone and go, then what happens? Truth is what they're saying, I can have like priest behavior in these situations. <laughs> like, dad, people be this pure. But he didn't come with any baggage. He didn't come with any like preconceived notions. He didn't come with any the church is mean and the church is savvy or the church. He just came with wow. So as we imagine this morning, if we hear the words of Jesus, the yoke is easy. Yes, we are called to follow. We are all to live lives of faith. But that does make the burden lighter because we are not carrying it alone. God is walking with us as are our community, our families, our friends. Our burden is lighter. And then, of course, our call is to lighten the burdens of those outside. So this morning, let us hear the words of Jesus saying to each other, the yoke is easy, the burden is hard. Dance when the music is happy, or cry with you when you make a song. But no, 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 no,